Hello everyone and welcome to Adobe Live. Uh, before we get started, we would of course like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land or ocean on which we live, create and learn on today, paying respects to elders past, present and emerging now. As you can see, we're um, a thousand leagues under the sea. No, we are just in a body of water and gonna have a, a very fun, just keep swimming time. So, as you can see, it is just me here, no Flynn today, unfortunately, um, but that just means we can be even more silly. Um, so, let's let's get down to it, shall we? Hello in chat, hello Gareth, hello Manny, hello um, Alessandra, and of course Flynn, uh, who's taking care of us as the chat mod today, which I'm very, very happy to see you in chat, Flynn. Um, and today, we're going to do some fictitious factual fish. Um, so heavily inspired by obviously the Little Mermaid stream that we had earlier this week with Ramesh Hare Krishnasamy, um, and actually also inspired by my own personal love of fish and strange looking creatures. So as we get going, um, let's just first show off uh, the origin story of this stream. Um, so first of all, I've designed uh, a little bit of a a logo title I thought since it's just me today let's have a little bit of extra fun and make a logo so we have Adobe Live's Firefly Aquarium um, which I thought was hilarious uh, let me know in chat if you think it is uh, just as funny as I do um, but let's get to it so these are some fish um, and you can see they're a bit they're a bit wonky a bit silly um, and these I actually drew in the notes app right here on my phone, which also just happens to be blue. Very convenient. Um, and I've uh, later also imported these into Fresco and refined the line work and everything like that and actually made them into stickers, which I thought would be a great inspiration for our stream today um, of turning fish and yes, still using Firefly. And I'll show you how we're going to do that uh, in just a minute into actual stickers um then the next step that i thought i would just show you all real quick um because this is a, a realistic stream i also did some warm-ups uh before we got started today uh so these are just some silly simple uh line work drawings of kind of what you might um be able to expect today um now let's see here, we'll do that and then also show the last bit of pre-stream prep was just picking a brush. Uh, now we recently had the release of Carty Webster's uh, summer and spring brushes. Uh, I am a massive fan of any brush that has a bit of texture to it. So these are some of my favorites so far, uh, just in terms of uh, sketch work and line work brush. And the one that we'll be using today, I believe, is the Smashed Felt Tip, which has such a lovely um, onomatopoeic um, name to it that I can't wait to, to use it. Now, Firefly. How are we using Firefly today? So, we are actually using Firefly uh, in two ways. So, what I've done first is I've picked out a couple a little bit challenging names of fish or aquatic life um, and put that into Firefly and then just added after that swimming in the ocean. So the idea is here that with the potentially somewhat limited library of reference that Firefly has so far um, using Adobe stock of um, fish and sort of coral reefs and everything like that, that this could be quite an interesting um, result and indeed it was and to spice it up even more i've also included some fictitious uh fish creatures as well so what i thought i'd do is i've lined them up all here with the name of what it is and of course the the reference image and i thought we'll just pick one at random and draw it out sound good i think that sounds good so Let's see, I'm going to try not to look at them too much and just let randomness decide. 
Uh, let's go with this third one. Aha! So we are starting with a sea cucumber. Now I think I either put down sea cucumber walking at the bottom of the ocean or just sea cucumber swimming in the ocean. So either of those two. Um, but I didn't give it any stylistic notes, not my usual pastel colour, um, nostalgic, kitsch, um, simplicity, just purely I just want the image. Um, and without further ado, let's get started. Now chat, I would be super curious uh, to know if any of you have fish of your own. Um, I used to have, have one actually, funnily enough, used to have a, um, a Siamese fighting fish, which is what, uh, Ramesh used earlier this week, um, for his mermaid. And it was named Logan after Wolverine, um, because of course it was, and I loved it very, very much. Now, let's see here. Now, since I don't know how many sea cucumbers uh, there are on even Adobe stock, the, the shape of this creature is a little bit undefined. So we are going to have to make some decisions of our own um, in terms of where does the head go? Or where is the back or the front? Um, but we can, <laughs> we can have fun with that decision. And what I thought we could do uh, a follow-up in the in the next uh, Firefly Friday is just doing a comparison of maybe some of your favorites here um, and compare them with what they're actually supposed to look like. I think that could be very fun. Um, absolutely. Let's see here. So this is not going to be very realistic, as you've seen from my previous <laughs> illustrations, uh, my warm-up sketches, and the the fish that I made on the notes app. So the idea really here is to have fun and make something with what Firefly um, has given us. Now I'm sensing a little bit of a pattern of these spikes potentially just going to draw that out um so this is me still in um sketch mode so anything can happen and i'm just focusing on kind of the big shapes general placement uh of stuff uh of these spikes for example these barnacles almost um and we'll see how we go now what i am thinking and how about chat you let me know would you rather i take each individual sketch to uh finish line work or uh potentially create more excuse me more sketches but maybe not as many finished ones by just going from uh, fish to fish. Let's see. Because I think just for the time being, <laughs> for the time being, um, Oh, what it has done very curiously is I didn't see that it made a second layer. Okay, but well let's just clean this up a little bit, give it a nose. Okay, now that the base sketch is done, I'm just going to move the tablet a bit further from my microphone so I don't bump into it too much. I'm going to lower the opacity and do another layer on top. And... Uh, draw over it again and now focusing more on the final uh line work so now i draw a little bit more slowly um 
just to finalize my mark making. Now I am realizing it is looking a bit like a cat turtle, perhaps. I don't know if you can see it or Blastoise as <laughs> uh, Flynn said in the chat, which I don't disagree with. Um, but you know, that's kind of fun. I think if we were to draw a scientific sea cucumber, um, it would look very different. But luckily, I've decided that that is not our goal for today. We're not drawing scientific animals, partly because these were informed by Firefly. Um, and also because I said so. And that is good enough reason as any to do or not do something. And especially with uh, sketching and experimental sketching like this, where you have very loose parameters, if you're not liking what you're doing or it just feels like, mm, yeah, I don't feel like doing that anymore, uh, you don't have to. You can just mix it up. And that doesn't mean that you're doing anything wrong. You've just changed your mind. Let's see here. Having another look at chat. Um, hello, Kari from Argentina. Welcome, welcome. Um, I'm curious, does Argentina have any unusual or cool fish or aquatic life? I would love to know. And also from YouTube, uh, Kiko VT. How long have you been doing digital art? That's a very good question. Um, a long time, I would say, without knowing specifically, um, I'm going to say a long time. Um, bearing in mind, I am only 27, um, so still, uh, still a youngin. Um, but I'd say I got into digital art in high school, um, and I might have been. Ooh, I'm just going to throw out a number here because I have no idea. I could have been 13. Does that sound like high school age? I'm not sure. Um, in terms of being interested in digital art and wanting to learn how to do it, that's that must have started a lot earlier. But I didn't start making digital art um, until high school in Australia, I think even. Um, because that was when I, for my birthday, I believe, got my first tablet. Now I'm sure I could have been making, um, actually I know for certain I was making digital art with just the, the trackpad or a mouse, um, which is a skill in and of itself, I would say, of of not only being able to create art for digital, but just being able to, <laughs> to manage using trackpad or mouse. But I, I don't really know exactly what year. Um, I definitely sort of constantly fluctuate between the two. Um, so as you, I forgot to bring them, um, but my, True warm-up sketches actually uh, were done on uh, index cards, which are just these small, relatively thick, maybe maybe 150 GSM uh, paper um, flashcards, basically just blank flashcards um, that you can get at the post office in in various sizes and for for relatively cheap. Um, that I love to just carry around with an elastic band around them. So whenever inspiration strikes, um, I can just take one out and scribble something down on it. And it makes it feel a little bit more official and fancy than a sketchbook because you kind of got a complete finished piece um, at the end of it. 
that you can just frame immediately and it looks very crisp and nice. Uh, yeah, that's going to have to do it. And um, where was I going with that? Yeah, so so I'll I'll change between doing that and then potentially scanning that in or taking a photo of it and, and using that as the basis for for a digital illustration. Oh my goodness. Now I've just seen Kiko VT. That is the most adorable thing I've ever seen. So thankfully, I'll oh bless you, Flynn. Flynn has sent through a photo of a sea bunny um, in our behind the scenes chat and it is adorable. And I might actually, you know what, Flynn? Can you search Sea Bunny in Firefly and see what it comes up with? Because I would very much like to draw a Sea Bunny, but I feel like it has to has to be on theme uh, for today. So let's see here, and that's a fantastic, fantastic pick for favorite sea creature. Um, you're definitely onto something there. And Alessandra, this is once again Fresco, which is my one true illustration love, I think. Now we've got in a decent bit and I've just made another layer for the final line work because sometimes it get to it gets to a point where I kind of need like a saving checkpoint in in my drawing so I'm just gonna make a new layer and do the next big stage which is these funky spikes that we've got going on. Now you'll notice that the overall um, shape language but not shape language actually just the the overall line work I should say is quite soft like even though we have these spikes um oh goodness Flynn that is quite and excuse me my nose just suddenly got very itchy um Flynn has just sent me through some firefly interpretations of sea bunny and we'll we'll see if I if I have a look at those because as I was researching for this stream um, and as you'd expect, I did come across some pretty gnarly um, creations thanks to to Firefly. Um, I promise you the ones that I've selected for today are all very nice and uh, not too scary at all, hopefully. But just some of the textures and the crunchiness of... Um, Fireflies uh, creations are a little bit too spooky for me. Now, as always, if you have any questions about what I'm doing or how I'm doing it, uh, please feel free to ask just in chat. And I will do my best to, to answer. Let's see here. Now that I think we have all the important bits covered for this sea cucumber, um, <laughs> goodness me, let's hide the sketch layer and just go in here and do a bit of cleanup. And let's see here. To continue working non-destructively, I'm going to create a mask on this initial first layer so I can remove the lines uh, that intersect here. Um, but if the, these spikes themselves were to move, I don't have to worry about redrawing and making it sort of fit in um, because it's already done. Now, 
Another feature that just released, because I have I have this written down somewhere. Um, let's see. Yes. A feature that um, just got released for Fresco that I saw as I was um, preparing for this stream and updating Fresco on my phone, not on my phone, on my iPad, is the fill in or paint inside feature, um, which I thought, let's let's try that out so before we do that I'll ha i think i have to merge my layers and let's just pick let's pick this green color and my understanding is because i didn't test this out before the stream so we're learning together here is i can just go in here instead of using clippy masks Ooh. Nope, I've done it wrong. Okay, what I'm gonna do is duplicate this layer and then, aha, I did not have it selected. So let's try it the first way first. Okay, so paint inside is on. Okay, we know Let's see here. Let's see if it works now. <gasps> yes, it does. Oh, that is pretty cool. Now, just like the paint bucket tool, um, it needs to be a closed shape. I'm pretty sure. Let's let's try it with a not closed shape, um, and it has to be on the same layer. So interestingly enough, it. Oh, there we see. Jumped a little bit. Um, you can still do it on not fully closed uh, images, but let's see. It is struggling since this bottom line isn't fully connected. It is not seeing that as part of the shape. So you'll see that here in this area, obviously it, it struggled a little bit. But this is a really interesting um, way potentially to do coloring in pages. So just making sure that all the lines are connected, this could be a great way to make your own uh, do-it-yourself color by numbers pages. But I just wanted to give that give that a go and show how that works. And maybe I'm not sure. Maybe I will replace my good old clipping mask technique with that instead. Who knows? Now, the good old traditional way, in addition to clipping masks, is also just to do your colouring in on the layer underneath as well, which is, I think, my go-to way of colouring stuff in. Let's see here. Now, while I'm doing these spikes... Why don't you chat decide what color the the show sort of the the shelly bit of this should be? Let's see. Mm. Yes, so the the fill in color uh, Kiko VT is on oh no, a the the paint inside, I should say is the newest feature uh, for Fresco, I believe. It was the one of the newest things, or one of the things that it mentioned when I updated the app, uh, alongside some motion, uh, a motion update, and one more thing, which sadly I can't remember exactly what that was. But one update that I'm really looking forward to is the um, symmetrical drawing. That's going to be really fun. Uh, so you bet I will try to make a either a, a Firefly Friday or a different kind of stream all about the symmetry drawing tool uh, in Fresco when that comes out. Let's see here. So far, Kiko uh, is voting for blue as the shell color. I think that that's a solid choice. 
would you want a, a light blue, a dark blue, a warm or a cold blue? You let me know and we'll figure something out. Let's see. Is that all the spikes? Yes, that's all the spikes. And then let's make another layer. Um, actually, you know what I will do? I will, is that the same? No, it isn't. Okay, I'm gonna make swatches. So we go one, I can give you a, a choice of blue colors. There we go. Two, oh, I'm a bit biased towards two because it's like a purplish blue. And let's see, what other kind of blue can we get here? Maybe this one. Okay. Three. So Kiko, you let me know um, what blue. Let's see. So is it number one, you think? Let's see. We can try out a section with number one. Let's do that. Ooh, number one or blue two. You know what? Since it's our drawing, our world, we can do both. So let's do, I think, blue two on top. Uh, we can do it like this. Let's see, and the benefit of the, the paint inside or the paint in tool, um, I suppose it's just to speed up your workflow because then you wouldn't need to to worry about what layer you're on. Um, you could just have it all be on the, on the one layer and you could, I think more quickly move, move between colors and filling stuff in. Let's see. Now also what I can do and what I might actually do is experiment with the line work color as well. Now, since I, I did a bit of a warm up uh, before the stream, this isn't my first sketch of the day, which is good because I was gonna say just with how time is going um, that we might possibly only have time for our sea cucumber a little lad. Um, but if that's the case, um, I'm gonna try and, and let's see, oh, I need to fix that bit, but let's just do this for now. I'm gonna try and color this in relatively quickly. Because there are some really funny, funny um, prompt images that I want to show you. So I'm just going to expand the brush size. I can cover more ground. Though usually, because drawing is such a mindful practice for me, I will actually keep to the same consistent brush size the entire time and just take it slow and filling it in and deciding whether I want texture to show through or not, basically leaving gaps like that. But for this, for today, you're gonna leave no pixel behind. I'm gonna color every pixel. But of course, also, whatever I don't have time to do today in the actual stream. Oh my goodness, this is looking interesting. Um, I can always catch up and do after the stream. Now let's make a new layer and go for our number one blue. And let's see, do we want that? Let's see how it looks like underneath here. Ah, 
I don't mind that. That's all right. Um, and what I might actually end up doing is then looking at the, the line work color, um, I will colorize the line work so that, for example, here, it's a nice contrast with a darker blue, but here amongst the lighter blue and the green, it clashes, in my opinion, just a tiny bit. Um, so I would fix it there and just paint it a little bit darker and then you get more uh, volume in your line work as well if, if it's different colors throughout your piece now just imagine that i fixed this section here oh no we don't want to erase um this section here just with how the the lines connect i don't think i'll have time to fix that fix that today, um, but imagine that that is fixed. Now let's see here. And then I'm thinking actually, we will do the other blue color, this one here, for this shell bit. And now I'm going to really crank up the brush size uh, for most of it because I want to at least sketch out one more, one more sea creature. And then we can bring it back down. Let's see, let's do 80. And just fix up. the edges here really quick cool cool let's see my hair is bothering me a bit there we go So I think that the painting tool might be really, really useful, but since I just discovered it this morning, uh, I'll require further research um, to see if it's the most useful for me. Okay, so now that we've used all the blues, let's potentially, the last thing that I'll do use a green as the line color so now i have made a clipping mask and let's just see what does this look like if we do okay so i like it in some areas and i don't like it in others but this is just a way to show how just changing the line color can give um depth uh to your piece so maybe we have on these spiky bits we won't have that green and yes this is a little bit messy and maybe we will have let's see Flynn if you could give me a minute maybe two minutes and uh, to just mess about with colors here that would be great. Uh, let's see. Maybe some of that. Mm, no, let's try something else. And it's all about now making it interesting, but not not really taking it too too seriously. But just testing out different colors and seeing where where they could go okay this is really deep oh i do like that that is a nice blue okay you know what i'm just gonna make a layer on top here and 
give it this very dark blue, almost black. And that will be our little sea cucumber turtle snail. <laughs> and there we go. Obviously it doesn't have uh, any highlights or, or shadows, but there's, there's our sea cucumber based on a firefly generated image. So let's, let's all group this together, make it one, one little folder and I'll show you just some of the other images that I collected. Oh, that's the wrong button. And you can all quickly pick uh, what the next one is. So we'll hide that for now and I'll just move up and uh, put that in a folder together and then hide that. Okay, so I'm going to quickly go through all of them. And if the, the first one that you see that really stands out, you post it in the chat and then Flynn, you let me know which one gets nominated first and we'll go into that one. Okay. Actually, let's zoom in so you can properly see. Okay, got Capricorn. Ah, you need to hide it. Okay. Let me know if I'm going too quickly, Flynn. Hopefully not. And again, these are all generated by Firefly and I've just told it the name of the, the creature and then either swimming in the ocean or walking in the ocean. And I haven't put on any of my usual pretty filters or anything like that. I have just told it, give me this and hope for the best. And as you can see, some of these are quite realistic, which much mean must mean, I should say, um, that there are images of, for example, jellyfish in Adobe stock that um, Firefly is referencing from. Let's see, now just having a check in the chat. Uh, it's a really nice color. Oh, thank you. I think it turned out really well. I'm very pleased with it. Um, and then Misty saying that they tried sea cucumber once at a restaurant and it was so yucky. That does sound like a very interesting um, dining experience um, that I'm sure you're glad you had so that you know that you never want to have it again. Um, all right, our axolotl. I almost, I almost couldn't say that. Axolotl seems to be the next pick. Now, actually, what I learned and what I didn't know, because I thought, hmm, axolotl, pretty cute, pretty nice, but where do they live? Because they don't actually live in the ocean, um, I found out. And if my research is right, they live just in one specific lake, um, or one maybe one kind of lake, or one lake in Mexico, actually. So that's really fun. I did not know that. Now, if someone knows better, please feel free to correct me. Because that was just a very quick, very, very quick Google on my part. So please correct me if I'm wrong, which is always very likely. Okay. Let's see, what a cutie already. Let's see, let's make, hmm, I'm wondering how realistic I should be. Cause I'm not very realistic by nature in my work. So let's give it some Kermit hands, Kermit hands and feet. And as you can see, Firefly has been very generous <laughs> the amount of fingers on this axolotl 
and it's giving it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven on one hand and five on the other, which we'll see. Oh, and we have the five minute mark. Okay, let's speed run this. Let's see. Now this is the true test of my skills and probably where Firefly will have done a better job than I. But let's let's see if we can do it. Okay, that's I'm gonna say that's it for the line work, the sketch line work. And then let's just go here. That's an eye. Go here. <laughs> this is gonna look um, very cute. Absolutely. It's just gonna look very cute. Uh, let's see what we have time for in five minutes. I'm not gonna allow myself to redraw these lines because then I will fixate on them and it'll take too long. <laughs> so this is gonna be an axolotl in not enough time. But sometimes, ooh, we already have uneven amount of fingers or whatever it's called for <laughs> a beautiful axolotl. Okay, and I'm gonna work destructively because I don't have time not to, um, to fix this. And chat, shout out real quick with a color for this while I also just put a random one. Okay, and let's go 120. Ooh, speed run, speed run. <laughs> got three minutes. Oh, we got this. It's fine. I actually think that maybe this should be a new segment, uh, either for Firefly Friday or a new segment on the show in general, which is do do a drawing or something, either with reference or not, and do it in five minutes, because as you can tell, the results here, three minutes, ooh, results here are fantastic. High quality stuff here on Adobe Live. Uh, and let's do, no, that's the same color. <laughs> do another pink, oh my goodness, why did I pick that? Well, we've, we've committed to it now, everyone. Uh, let's see that and let's just do the eyes, give them another color, um, maybe do a bit of a pattern on it. Let's see when it's two minutes, I'll put pencils down. I promise. Cause they do want to give a, a proper goodbye. And then we go, Ooh, pretty. <laughs> then let's find a dark red or just a red, red. No, let's do a dark red. We have time to find a dark red. That's a purple, but that's fine. And we'll increase the brush size. And boom, that is our axolotl. <laughs> our speed run axolotl. Uh, incredible. So what we had time to do today, I'm gonna hide that so I have a bit more space, is we managed to create a sea cucumber question mark creature. Um, oh, I missed a layer. Oh, come on. There we go. Uh, <laughs> an axolotl and a sea cucumber, maybe, uh, in today's stream. My goodness. Okay. <laughs> That's how far we got. I love that we have a blue one and a red one. That's very, very cute. So I'm going to sign out. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us or joining me, I should say. And I hope to see you next time for more experimental fun stuff uh, for Firefly Friday. Catch you later, everyone.